Hello. In basic macroeconomic models, we assume that firms have a constant returns production function, which means that they don't generate profits. However, there are many contexts where you do need firms to have profits, and in those contexts, we need to figure out how to discount them appropriately. These would necessarily be contexts where there is some sort of aggregate uncertainty, and there the firms have a value function, so we need to worry about what their discount factor is. So first, I'm going to give you a quick intuition for how this might work, and then I'm going to approach this in a different way. So today we're talking about the stochastic discount factor, and we're going to start with some intuition. So let's suppose we have a firm that generates profits pi, and these profits depend on the following things. A random state variable zt, which follows a Markov process, an endogenous state variable kt, and some decision variable vt, which is not a state variable. Notice that all of these could be vectors. Now the firm's discount factor should reflect how the owner feels about consumption today as opposed to tomorrow. And so that means that since the households own this firm, we need to figure out how they feel about consumption today versus tomorrow. So, suppose the household's portfolio is fully diversified. In that case, they only care about aggregate uncertainty. So for simplicity, let's just assume that the entirety of ZT is aggregate uncertainty. Then we move ahead and look at the household's problem. So suppose that household preferences are the following. They maximize the expected value of infinitely discounted utility of consumption, where we're going to assume a particular form, the usual constant relative risk version utility function, which looks like this, and which you're probably familiar with by now. The marginal utility of consumption today is this expression, the expected marginal utility of consumption tomorrow as viewed from today is, well, it's going to be the same thing, except that we have to update the time subscript to tomorrow, then it's expected, and it's also discounted. So consumption generates this many utils today and this many utils tomorrow. This tells us how the agents view consumption today compared to tomorrow. So the additional utility from X units of consumption today is X times this. The additional utility from X units of consumption tomorrow as viewed from today's perspective is 
x times this. So how can we use this to value profits? Well, the additional value from consuming x units of consumption today is just x, since we're measuring value in units of consumption today. The additional value of consuming x units of consumption tomorrow is not x. It's going to be this expression divided by the margin utility of consumption today. Since that's what we need to do to make sure that this becomes x. We have to do the same thing to both expressions. And what does that tell us? If we set x equals to 1, it tells us that if we give income today weight 1, income tomorrow, as evaluated from the perspective of today, has weight this expression when x equals 1. So thus, we have that. The discount factor is this. Suppose you're in a steady state. What do you get? Well, in a steady state, ct plus 1 is ct, so this ratio equals 1, and there's no uncertainty, so you get this. This underlines the fact that you need uncertainty for this consideration to be important. Now let's take another approach. Suppose that what happens is that firms and households can borrow or lend using a risk-free bond, which pays I sub T in period T. In other words, if you had some bonds from the previous period, you bring them over and they'll pay you IT for sure today. This means that if you borrow a unit of consumption today, you have to pay 1 plus IT tomorrow. Alternatively, if you want a unit of consumption tomorrow, you need to invest 1 over 1 plus IT today. So, what does this mean? It means that the present value of a unit of consumption tomorrow is this. So, this means that the discount factor that we were discussing before equals this. So, let B sub T be the bond holdings of the household. So the household is trying to maximize the expected value of its infinitely discounted utility of consumption. Here is the discounting. As discussed, we're going to focus on the usual preferences. And there may be some other stuff that affects their preferences. Subject to their expenditures on consumption and on buying new bonds being less than or equal to some other stuff that we don't know about 
plus their bond income. Great. This can be simplified because we can replace consumption here, which should have a T subscript, with consumption expressed using this equation. We know it's going to bind with equality because preferences are non-locally satiated. So we'll end up with their income minus their bond holdings. So that's their problem. Now we can take the first order condition. And to do that, let's notice that BT plus one is going to show up in two places here. One at time T, when agents are deciding how much to set aside and second, a date t plus one when it generates income. So it's only going to show up in two places. One is here, and the other is the same term when seen from date t, expected and discounted. and with the appropriate time subscripts updated. So this is what we need to focus on. So we need to derive this by BT plus one. It does not appear here, so this is going to go away. It does not appear here either. It appears here, so we need to, first of all, using the chain rule, derive this whole thing respect to this expression, which means that this exponent comes out here and is reduced by one. And then we also need to multiply everything by the derivative of this expression with respect to bt plus one, which is minus one. These terms cancel. And notice that we can just rewrite this as C sub T. Great. Next, let's tackle this term. We need to, first of all, notice that BT plus one doesn't show up here, so it's gonna go away. It doesn't show up here either. We derive by this expression. And so once again, we're going to end up with that coming out and this exponent reducing by one. Then we also need to multiply by the derivative of the expression with respect to BT plus one, which is this. These terms cancel. And again, notice that this is just C T plus one. And all of this has to equal zero. Add this term to both sides. Of course, this becomes zero. Now divide both sides by this. This term becomes one. And finally, divide both sides by this. these terms cancel. And once again, we end up with the result that the discount factor equals this expression. One last point, note that this compounds. What do I mean? Suppose you lend for two periods, then what's your discount factor going to be? It's going to be dt times dt plus one, right? And what is that equal to? It's equal to this times the same thing updated. But now notice that d 
these terms are going to cancel out. So we can move this over here, square the discount factor, and the expectation term is still seen from the same perspective of today. And so this is going to be the discount factor when you're trying to discount profits from two periods ahead. More generally, if you land for S periods, the discount factor will be a generalization of this expression because you're going to have a telescoping function where each time you add another term, it's something is going to cancel as here with the term from the last one. So that is a brief introduction to the stochastic discount factor. I hope you find this intuitive and useful.